Hi, I'm Hal Thompson, and today my guest is Liam Charles, baker extraordinaire, television presenter, and my favorite contestant on The Great British Bake Off in 2017. It's known as The Great British Baking Show in America because off is a naughty word here. Oh my gosh. What was your favorite moment when you were on the show? When I first went there, when I first went into the tent, that was mind-blowing. When I got Star Baker as well, week six, yeah, that was definitely one of my favorite moments because I, I worked so hard to get Star Baker just the once and that. Yeah, it was sick. Was that the time that you baked the deceptive pancakes? Oh, no, that was the first week. That was wicked, though, innit? That was fun. Maybe you should have called them pan fakes or scam cakes. I should have done that. That's a good idea, pancake. Because they weren't really pancakes, they were just cake. They were just <laughs> cake. Yeah, they were. You're now a judge on the spin-off show, Junior Bake Off. I've baked three items in advance of this interview, and I was wondering if you would judge my bakes. Sure, let's do it. All right, let's start with my signature bake. Okay, so tell me, what have you made today? Ham. Ham? Ham on a stick. On oh, a cake. I've baked ham. What what's the flavor? Baked. <laughs> what is it? How big is it? That's a bit personal. Oh my gosh! I want to ask you. <laughs> Hal's going to get personal with his signature ham on a stick, a classically prepared ham surrounded by a circle of succulent fruit, topped with a colorful and festive sprig. Okay, Hal, could you reveal your ham? It's called Ham on a Stick. Oh my days. It's my signature bake. Did you get that twig from outside? I did. It was it was already uh, cooked. Oh, oh. Did you clean it? I put it in my mouth a little bit. What, the stick? Yeah. And the ham? So you've got like a, a, a dirty stick on some ham, yeah. Oh, that's a pretty good name for it. I should call it Dirty Stick and Some Ham. That sounds so disgusting. How would you grade my signature bake? Um, creativity, I'd definitely give it a 10. Uh -huh. For visual parents, I'd definitely give it like a 6. Is, is it worthy of a handshake? Yeah. If, it, if, if the twig is clean, I'll shake your hand. Virtual handshake. This is great. What a great moment for me. You're the best guest that I've ever had on. I'll take that. I'll definitely take that. I heard you deliver cheeky treats all over East London. So time between first lockdown and second lockdown me and my mate went around london just to randomly give like bakes away to like the general public some people that we know as well we dropped the first episode this week so it was east london and then we went to north london south and west the idea next year is to bring it to the state maybe you could cheekily drop off a pear pecan maple tart in east madison wisconsin i could do that i could do that you could drop me off a tart. Okay, cool. We'll do a 10 inch pecan maple tart. Your friend Miles drives you around to drop off the treats. He seems like a, a pretty good guy. Yeah, Miles is cool, man. Um, we met like a couple years back. He was, uh, we was working together. And ever since then, we've just been like really good mates. So um, I can't drive in it. So I needed someone. He's an amazing like cameraman as well. So and plus he's my mate. He's my genuine friend as well. So it works. I can't drive either. I have a friend who drives me around. His name is Munt. Munt. He'll drive me around, and then he usually threatens to kill me. So it's not as much fun as dropping off treats. Is he your friend? We hang out together, even though I don't want to. Doesn't that mean we're friends? If you don't want to hang out with someone, you shouldn't hang out with them. I don't, I don't have to hang out with Munt. Is that his real name? Is that a nickname? No, that's his real name. Munt Wellington III. Munt Wellington III. Has he ever had a fight with you? No, I just, I just try to run. I think you should get rid of Munt. Munt doesn't sound nice. I'd rather be friends with you and Miles. Let's do it. Come. Come to the next drop-off. I've got your first book right back there, as you can plainly see. Yes. I heard you have a second book called Second Helpings. Yeah, I do. Is it about helping people twice? <laughs> that, is top, that is top class. Slowly because, you know, the, the, the dishes and the, the baits in there are so good. You always want like a second helping of it. You've, you've expanded beyond just baking treats, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, I do savory as well. I do savory too. What's your go-to savory dish? I put ham on top of my goats. Are these goats alive? Oh yeah, they live in my house with me. 
They'll sometimes leave me cheeky treats on the floor. So you have goats in your house? Sometimes I go outside the house. I've got a goat door. How big is this door? It's about two feet tall, so some of the goats have to duck. Do you have ducks as well? I have a ducks and a duck door. Do you have a door for yourself, though? No, I don't use that door. That's just for the animals. And how'd you get outside your house? Through the window. Growl window at the top. Oh, the second floor window, and then I climb down a ladder. I know that you're coming to the U.S. If you want, uh, wanted to be my roommate, I could create a special door for you. How many goats do you have? Upwards of... 160. You've got 160 goats. How big is your house? Well, not not all at once. So they just come in like a drive through <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they just show up. At any one point, I probably don't have more than 100 goats. What sort of music do they listen to? Trap. Because they're trapped in your house. Only if they want to be. <laughs> I'd like to do the technical challenge now. Could you present me with a challenge? I want you to make the apricot pecan blueberry slabs. They have to be well baked, crumbly, and an even distribution of fruit. For this challenge, Liam won't know whose bake is whose. It will be revealed after he's judged it. Liam has offered to pull his shirt over his head so that he cannot see which bake belongs to which baker. Okay, you can come back. I'm ready. It's maybe more of a, a slab. Is that a slab in a chocolate cake? This is the sponge. You just, so you, sit, so you just put a sponge in a cake? Yeah, I wanted it to have a good sponge. Have you tried it yourself? I'll try it and, and you can rate it based on my reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. It's a bit chewy. What about the sponge? Is the sponge nice? <laughs> uh, it's too chewy. I can't. I can't get it. I will give it a seven. It's very creative, and I like how you've added uh, texture via the sponge, the the literal sponge. In terms of flavor and texture, I'll probably give it a two, because when you was eating the sponge and the sponge, you didn't seem too impressed. So, what would you do better next time, Hal? I'd maybe make something that actually is apricot blueberry. Yeah. Am I in trouble? Or do you think I still have a chance at Star Baker? You still have the chance because your signature was pretty good, right? It's very creative. You had a bit of a dip. I really got to pull out all the stops for the showstopper. You do. Oh, I forgot to reveal who made this bake. I had the card for it. It was me. <laughs> Why do you have your face on a postcard? <laughs> Did you ever meet those sheep that graze outside the tent? But you know what? I was so like, you know, stressed out or <laughs> or like buzzing because of the tent. I didn't really have time to talk to the sheep, but... Oh, that's too bad. Uh, have you spoken to the sheep as well? Not those particular sheep, but I know sheep who know them. Six degrees of sheep -eration. Oh, okay. Do you get most of your recipes from Cynthia? She inspires loads of my, uh, loads of my Caribbean uh, savory bakes and my savory dishes. Does she have any fun nicknames that she calls you? No, actually. She just calls me Liam, but people call me Pumpkin Spice. Why do they call you Pumpkin Spice? Because I'm adorable. I wish my <laughs> nickname was Pumpkin Spice. Do you have a nickname for me? H-Dog. H-Dog? H-Dog. Oh yeah, I get it, because my, my first name's Hal. Or well, H-Goat, because obviously you have loads of goats. I do have loads of goats. You're H-Goat because you're honestly the greatest of all time. You're welcome. Actually, a good nickname for me would be Goat Load. I see. Yeah, I would say yes, but it sounds very suspect. What's a naughty wedge and how do you cut it? A naughty wedge is something that is a slice that flirts between an eighth and a quarter. So it's like, oh, I shouldn't really have a, I shouldn't really have a quarter of a cake, but I fancy it. I like to eat big bites. Big bites of cake. <laughs> I think it's time for the showstopper. Are you ready for this? Yes, I'm ready for the showstopper. For my showstopper, I put my own spin on your biscuit tin cake. Okay. My cake is based on something that's been really important to me throughout my life. My miniature couch, for obvious reasons. Hey. Hal's biscuit couch frame will be made of gingerbread with cake cushions and a delightful buttercream frosting. 
as well as the word couch. So I'd like to present to you my biscuit couch cake. Is that actually made out of biscuit? That is sick! This is totally, completely based on your recipe. Wait, did you make that? I stuck to your recipe pretty closely for this one. That is awesome. I really did my best for the showstopper. I think that's, I'm not gonna lie, that's probably something like, I don't know if I could make that. Wait, this is so cool. Oh, is there cake in there as well? It's a yeah. cake. I'll just cut a naughty wedge. Oh wow, that tastes really good. You like it, yeah? Yeah. That's like the best thing I've ever tasted. Yeah, I love a slice. Do you want a piece? I have to see on the couch. See for couch. <laughs> Cheers. That's a good snap. It's absolutely amazing. I think you've taken your time. You've really thought about this couch. And I am very pleased. And I like how you use cake and biscuits and buttercream. And I just love how you brought the whole thing together. Now it just says, ugh. That's, That's how it. good I feel after I eat it. I'm like, ugh. Ugh. Uh, I can't believe I baked this. The big question is, am I the star baker? Yes. This is the best moment of my entire life. You're our first British guest on the show, so in honor of that, we got you some special questions. I'm the first Brit on the show. Adam Sizemore asks, what's the difference between being British and English? Well, obviously, like, you know, in Britain, there's four countries. So you've got Wales, Northern Ireland, and then you've got Scotland. And obviously, I'm from England, so I'm English as well as British. But if you was from Scotland, you'd be Scottish as well as British. I was in Scotland once. I got attacked by a horde of sheep. Really? They came at me. I think they were going to gut me. Oh. The Scottish sheep are are brutes. They are they are lethal. Especially if you're wearing a kilt. <laughs> Andrew Martin says, "Is scone pronounced scone or scun?" I say scone, maybe because I'm I'm from London. Uh, but if you're from up north, you might say scon. But how I break it down is like scone. Drop the s. It's cone. So add this s back at the start. It's scone. Yeah, you wouldn't say you wouldn't say con. Yeah, you wouldn't say can I have a, uh, ice cream on con. You wouldn't say that. Nuke the moon says Stonehenge, Stone Roses, or Rolling Stones. That's a good question. The Stone Roses is kind of an English deep cut. You might not be familiar with them. Oh uh, no, I'm to be fair. I'm 23, so I'm. Uh... Tony Mayer asks, is spotted dick curable, delicious, or both? Oh my days. Did you say is spotted dick curable, delicious, or both? I've never, okay, okay, ready for the answer, yeah? I've never tasted spotted dick, but I know spotted dick is delicious. Do you know what I mean? It's curable by eating it. You have to eat it and then you, you cure it yourself. Yeah. I'd like to thank Liam Charles for being on the show. You might like to check out his book, Cheeky treats. If you want to make yourself an uh cake, if I can bake something like this, think of what you could bake. Incredible stuff. Uh. Anything else you'd like to say, Liam? I just like to say hello to the, all the Americans that watch Bake Off. I'll be back soon. Oh my gosh. Oh.